Welcome to the Business of Travel, the official podcast of the Global Business Travel Association. I'm Kevin Fleece, Chief Marketing Officer at GBTA, and it's my pleasure to be moderating today's discussion. GBTA is launching a quarterly podcast subseries focused on AI and business travel, which we are calling GBT AI. Today's podcast is the first installment. In each episode, we'll bring together experts, thought leaders, and innovators from the fields of AI, travel management, and corporate mobility to share their insights, experiences, and predictions. I'm here today with Tom Allen, CEO at AI Journal, Sam Hilgendorf, CIO at Fox World Travel, and Matt Arrego, CEO and co-founder Cornerstone Information Systems. Thank you all, and thank you for joining us. Before we dive in, let me give a little context as to why we are launching this sub-series on AI and business travel. Technologies like ChatGBT have the potential to significantly change the way we work, and business travel management is no exception. And there's a lot of chatter about AI, but it's not widely understood. There's a lot of opportunity, but also an, inf an information gap. So that's what I'm hoping we can help close. So today we'll lay the foundation in what I hope will become a long-term conversation on this topic on this platform. So with that, let's jump in. Tom, let's start with you. And let's start at the 100,000 foot view. Take us to the stratosphere and look down, gaze down upon this topic for us. Uh, we have a lot of listeners who've heard the term AI, but are not familiar with what it is. So before we get into travel or business travel specifically, what is generative AI and how is it reshaping business generally? Yeah, it's a great uh, first starting question. I'm really excited for the chat we're going to have today. And um, literally just come back from a, another conference looking at the power of large language models. Um, but really, it's a good foundational question to be asking because when you look at generative AI or gen AI and you might see it as this buzzword, it really is a type of art artificial intelligence technology um, that's mainly known for what I mainly see it as giving a personal view for creating various types of content. So that might include text, it might include imagery, it might include audio, and it will be using synthetic data. But what that really means to people that are just getting started in AI or just getting involved in this, it's really helping create a simplicity of new user interfaces. So it's a real powerful tool that can be applied to a lot of applications. And I mean, that's where we get the benefits and the cons, right? And I'm sure Matt and Sam and yourself, Kevin, will be delving into this. And I'm really excited to learn from everyone this call today about the travel sector because I've looked at it lightly. But the, the area that, I mean, is the pro and the con and where people will see it in their day-to-day -day lives is that it opens up opportunities, right? So it can be anything from dubbing content on movies. It can be translation services. It can be understanding how audios um, uh, put through a system to to make um, better analysis on so people don't have to be there doing it manually it can create rich educational content for people and it can come in multiple different ways as i said audio visual imagery and you might have seen it recently around deep fakes and that's become very popular that is very much powered uh digitally formed images or videos which are deep fakes or can become deep fakes um that become very harmful because it can trick and it can uh, can position people and it can uh position it to be true and it's actually false and that can go into the financial world so uh know your customer that can go into the insurance world it can go into all these different aspects or it can go simply into someone tricking the, the media it's what the media are getting a lot of stuff for at the moment because it's like is this true is it not it's what x is facing a lot of backlash on and i'm sure google are getting their fair share i mean they're in a big trial at the moment um which kind of relates to what they're building um but yeah so it's a real powerful thing and i think people need to understand that uh, a lot of people like to look at the negatives or look at, the, I, I say, risks or things they might need to be more curious about is a better word of saying it than than uh, putting a bad label on it. But I mean, there's lots of opportunities. And I think um, when you look at it quite simply that it can generate content and it's a machine learning algorithm that is um, creating pictures, imagery, videos and audio much quicker it really shows you how that can be applied and for this uh, for the sake of this conversation in the travel sector and what that can do um but i mean yeah that's how i'd see it and i'm um, really excited to um to learn more about how it's being used in the travel sector and what the kind of limitations and more importantly 
what the uh, opportunities are for um, for people because that's why it's ultimately for right. So it's, it's ultimately there to help us and it's there to speed up our day to get us better decisions and um, that's yeah that's what gets me excited about it. Well, and Tom, I mean, I, I think from from my perspective, this is Sam from Fox. What what really has changed, I, I think, since since last December was you know what what Chat GPT brought with mm. with the I mean the capabilities around the, the generative AI, but it finally made it a really good user experience. I mean, we, we've yeah. had chatbots that have used AI for years. I mean, your you know cable company has used a chatbot. Your you know automobile company stuff like that. But but those those interactions were not good. I mean, how, how many times you can think of that you were working with a chatbot and it'd be like, all right, you you didn't figure out exactly what I want, so you don't have a prescripted answer, and now you're lost, and all you end up doing is typing agent, agent, agent until yeah. until you get to a person. But and that's where where this breakthrough, I mean, in in December was was amazing. I mean, what, ChatGPT reached a, a you know a, a hundred million users in like five days. Or, yeah. or, or I mean, it was it was unreal. Uh, yeah. it, it was all because that experience changed so much. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's such a good point. Just to that as well, it's it, it, it's such a good point, Sam, because that's what excites me. It's when I was getting you know uh, stories and pictures through before people are having hands-on experience with it. And I think now I was at a conference the other day and I was saying, don't just look at it as chat GPT. I mean, there's another one that's just come out, Pi, and there's Anthropic, and there's all these other ones that people can play with. But it's really, what is that doing? And I, I don't want to press on this topic too much, but for anyone listening, it's more think about it in a business use case. How is AI being applied to your workflows? How is AI being used to your budgeting system? How is AI being used to your hiring practices? And all of that is going to lead into the next great points from um, from, from the four of us. So yeah, looking forward to it. Great. Yeah, let's let's get into that. I think that's great context. Um, so for those of you who've used ChatGBT or another generative AI system, it's all prompt driven. You type in a question or a query or a prompt, the more detailed the prompt, the more accurate the response. And I think that was what was so surprising for me too, to Sam's point, starting back in January when ChatGPT 3 was released, was the level of accuracy. It's not perfect, uh, but it gets you pretty far along in terms of what you're looking, whether it's a blog post or a script or image creation, et cetera. So let's bring it back to let's bring it back to business and business travel specifically. And let me turn it over to Matt. So so Matt, um, business travel is a vast landscape. What are you seeing? What are the areas that you think are most likely to see change first from artificial intelligence? Yeah, thanks, Kevin. I think I think Sam and Tom kind of started alluding to to some of these areas. Uh, we're starting to see um, you know some really interesting you know, applications in, in a variety of areas, but I think that you know, the, the obvious one is kind of the personalization you know, side of it, which, you know, is how how do you look, you know, travel is a very event based kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> process from the from the moment it's booked all the way through the process of traveling. You know, in business travel, you have all these events that you have to go through the checking in at the hotel, all of this and then all the things that you have to do wherever you, it is that you're going. And, and for a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of uh, insecurity in that. I mean, if you're a road warrior, certainly you know what you're doing. But but I've seen such a wonderful ability to, you know, to go into ChatGPT and, and suggest an itinerary, suggest things to do on how to do it and and ask that question in a very simple manner and, and get a very accurate, somewhat accurate response back often uh, as to how how others have done it, essentially. And, and so, you know, what is, you know, what are things that are going on, you know, around the location that I'm going to? What's the best way to transport myself from, you know, uh, London Heathrow to uh, to, uh, you know, in the, to London. Uh, so those those are things that, you know, all of a sudden become much more accessible um, and personal in the way they respond. But customer service, obviously, these these are, are much more intuitive in how they interact with services type issues. And so as you start seeing these tools rolled out and, and AI rolled out into the service uh, area of travel and business travel, uh, it becomes really you know, a much more powerful way of interacting with the services components that are kind of situational sometimes. Uh, because the, through automation, you can drive these kind of interactions in a very unique way and at the time that they need to occur. 
the, the real thing that I see is operational efficiencies, and that's really important for the operation side of the business, um, you know, that that supports travel uh, inside an organization, um, you know, and to the partnerships, you know, of working with their TMCs, uh, because I see a lot of auto opportunity to automate uh, things from data analysis, uh, you know, through just the automation of workflows that AI can help with. Definitely, definitely. And I think that, you know, you maybe we should just take a pause and just talk a little bit about the data behind AI and uh, just how do you train a system like that? I, I think at the very beginning, Tom mentioned LLMs and lo large language models. I think just to, for the sake of simplicity, this is really the database that your whatever AI you're using is being trained on that data. And maybe that's something we can touch on is um, how do you train how do you train a service-oriented uh, tool um, to be effective uh, based on the data we have today? Maybe that's something we can touch on as we get a little bit further down the road. But let me go over to the TMC side because we talked about TMCs. And, uh, you know, Sam uh, at Fox, what are you seeing from the agency side in terms of how AI might be shaping or reshaping uh, your systems and processes? Yeah, so I, I guess I, I, let me be the first to say that, you know, I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords. Uh, th this is coming and we, we can't stop it. Uh, it so ChatGPT has, has shown that AI is now really, truly ready for professional services. Um, you know, what do I mean by that? I mean, we, we've been surrounded by AI for years. You know, our phones are filled with it. You know, we've got all these individual products, GPS, facial recognition apps, autocorrect. You know, all these things are, are AI within products, and they've been embedded with products for a while. Well, professional services or, or you know, those services specifically provided by talented people where knowledge, you know, expertise, empathy, you know, you know, are really the value you're getting, well, that largely hadn't been touched yet. And that's where, again, this generative AI capability is showing it's ready to, to now, you know, impact professional services. So from a, from a TMC perspective, it, it really comes into the dis discussion, are we in a fight against AI? You know, is AI going to replace the work that uh, our agents and our, our services, you know, the services that we provide? Or, you know, can we use it to, to augment and enhance that? Um, and, and really, the, the takeaway I've, I've gotten so far is AI is not going to replace humans today. However, uh, AI augmented companies are definitely going to replace those that you know, haven't embraced uh, AI. So, and, and travel's been through this before and, and travel, you know, TMCs have been through this before. You know, we've gone through the, the shift from uh, paper ticketing to e-ticketing, the, the shift into online booking tools. And each time this, these new technology advancements came through, it was the, you know, the threat that, you know, TMCs agents are gonna go away. And the fact that it hasn't hasn't happened, and it, it won't happen, but scale has changed. So it, let's say in the the 70s and 80s, when it was all paper tickets, uh, and we just use big round numbers. Let's say you needed 100 agents to support a hundred million dollar business. Well, now it's 100 agents supporting 500 million dollars of business. Right. With this tool, the tool set, and the support that we get from it, you know, it could be 100 agents supporting a billion dollars of business uh, over the next several years. It's the scale and the the support that our agents are going to get that that really is going to kind of change what what TMCs can bring to the table and how they do it. So you see that AI sort of operating alongside the agent, then not a replacement to, but augmenting the agent. Yep, very much so. And in a couple of different places. I mean, it's, it's kind of like the, the, their own little personal assistant. Uh, so some of the first places to, that we're kind of looking at and exploring uh, around customer support, anything that an agent would need to research, how can I present that information through a, an, an AI system that's faster than Googling or faster than going out to a SharePoint site, looking up a, a standard operating procedure, figuring out what the task is and then coming back. I mean, I could be saving minutes uh, to two hours over the course of a day for an agent just by having, you know, uh, SOPs as part of, of their platform for them to be able to query back and forth on how do I do something. Uh, same thing for researching travel is like, right, uh, you know, originations, destinations, what are options, things like that. Today, they're, they're running searches. How can I have that AI uh, model provide a first pass 
for them to take that time away. So those are a couple examples of, and, and Matt hit on it earlier. I mean, the operational side of it, those are places you can just pull out what, what historically we haven't thought about as wasted time. But with this, the power of these tools, well, it all of a sudden becomes wasted time pretty quick. And I can focus those agents on really what their knowledge is, what their experience is, what, you know, what they can bring to, to the conversation through their empathy without taking that time in, in research. What's really interesting, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, well, so it's, what's really interesting, too, what Sam said is that as 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 ChatGBT has come into the workplace as you know, knowledge, you know, especially in a technology company like ourselves, Sam you know, has a lot of technology that he has to leverage. He's got programmers in there becomes, you know, and people become aware of the power of this technology. They start defining what you know, they want, how they want to be productive and efficiency and how they want to focus in on the most important things that they can do as human beings you know, to put value into, into, into that business. Our programmers, for example, are finding that you know, they can have a large part of ChatGPT write part of their code at times. Mm -hmm. and, and so now they're just saying, hey, I'm kind of outsourcing you know, part of my job so that I can focus on other things. And it's a very, very, you know, easy on ramping of, of that kind of mentality. And, and that's going to be just really a major change, you know. So so organizations that adopt and embrace this, you know, are really going to find their workers, you know, really empowered to do great work potentially. Yeah. yeah. Some great ahead, points. I, I think it's, um, Sam, you really uh, raised something with me because I was at um, COGX earlier this week and some great speakers were there. But one of the things that, and this should come into context, especially with your point around data, Kevin, which we're covering in this episode. But um, they were saying how 3 million decisions are made by aeroplanes collectively around the world per second. So that's the amount of decisions that an aeroplane is making. And you think all of that, especially for the travel sector, and they said that's why planes are the most safe, safest way to fly. And it's what cars are essentially trying to do through Teslas and Mercedes and all these cars that are really heavy on the kind of data push. But to your point, and, and that just shows you what to do with data, the context of data. And I mean, that's a real um, passion point for me, because I think like what works in the travel sector, you might be a thriving hundred million pound business, try and apply that to food and beverage. It's probably not going to work. And that data is going to be put into a different context and you're going to need different procedures, different ways of using generative AI, different large language models. But I think with um, having these chatbots, you, Sam, you mentioned uh, 100 agents for a 500 million pound business or million dollar business instead of a 100 million pound business. These are going to become much, much more frequent. I mean, look at WhatsApp that sold to Facebook for 19 billion. There was about 55 employees. That gave them a fetch of about 350 million per employee. That is going to become very common. Well, not very common, much more common, I'd say, or much more frequent with the rise of these kind of chatbots and with the rise of uh, generative AI and people and businesses implementing them. And what you've just both said, Matt and Sam, for the travel industry really makes me think of the servicing, the ticketing systems in place, how to make sure that they learn better models to know exactly where they want to go on holiday, what is going to be for business travel, what where the conferences are. It's all going to be much, much more personal and so much more powerful for the end user and uh, to Sam's point it's yeah if you're not on board it's going to be a real struggle because it's going to be something that will massively or at least I think that um to to really benefit your business so great points yeah absolutely and before maybe we come back to um specific processes within business travel I think just to take a beat and just again talk about how generative AI and maybe specifically chat GBT works um Chat GBT, if, if, if you've used it, you know it just uses a simple query, a simple prompt box where you can ask it anything or prompt it to, to create whatever you want. But Chat GBT essentially indexed all of human knowledge that's available on the internet, right? That's the basis for Chat GBT. It went out and indexed every web page on the internet that was available up through, I think, July 2021. Um, and um, it was trained to identify pattern recognition. And um, and so it's sort of an alternative to Google search for lack of a better word, where Google search will find you five blue links, ChatGBT will actually generate output for you. So if I asked it to come up with six questions to ask uh, travel experts about how AI is affecting business travel, it'll actually generate five questions for me to ask on this podcast. So it's, 
it's it's been trained on everything that is available publicly on the World Wide Web through July 2021. But as we bring this inside of our businesses, um, um, Sam, maybe you can talk a little bit about that, um, how the importance of data and how AI is really contextual or to the data that you have. So if I'm standing up an operational AI system, what kind of data would I need? And maybe you can just help us connect the dots between the front end and the back end a little bit. So that's that's definitely where the the magic and the work all truly is. So we're, we're right now we're in the midst of of a, a deployment uh, with a with a specific use case around our our business travel uh, side of things, and there's a lot of data that we want to leverage with this. Uh, it is it's like trying to train a five year old how to do calculus. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, uh, it's got it's got incredible raw capability. I mean, you, you talk to a five year old; it's amazing what they can they can come up with and and where their minds are and all the potential that's there. But it takes an immense amount of training to get them to the point where they understand the context of all of the the information that they've got, can apply that back in, in a way that you want to you want to leverage it. Uh, so right now we, we've got uh, a couple questions, three test questions we're taking to a, a massive database and trying to just continue to, to say, all right, this is what I'm looking for. When it answers something correctly, yep. You know, it's, it's almost like encouraging, hey, all right, you know, you did great, you know, fantastic. You know, two plus two is four. All right, keep going. Uh, and then when things get wrong, it's the steering it back. You know, this is something I, this is what I'm specifically looking for. Uh, and it's a lot of iteration. I mean, I think that's going to be like the word of the, of the year for folks that are, that are working with this stuff is iteration. Every time something doesn't quote, quite go right. All right. You got to iterate on it. <laughs> got to teach it, you know, reteach it again. Uh, and over time it, it gets better and better, but it, it is that, that tying the, the data itself to the the model and getting it to understand the context is the is the hardest part for sure. Absolutely. So, and I think it's uh, the old saying: uh, "Garbage in, garbage out." It's only as good as the yep. data, and it's only as good as the model that you have sitting on top of the data to find those answers. So, Matt, I think we touched on booking, but we sort of glanced past it. Um, you're a travel technology provider at Cornerstone Information Systems. We talked a little bit about booking, but how do you see booking evolving? I mean, it's something that I think every traveler can relate to, every agent, every travel manager. How might booking evolve or improve as a result of some of the work we're seeing around AI? Yeah, I mean, it's it well, it, it, it's a it's booking in general is a process that's been in a constant state of evolution. I mean, from the from the moment that you, you know, from the days that you picked up the phone and called somebody. Or even before that, when you actually went physically to the travel agency, walked in the door, sat down with somebody to plan a trip, you know, and the whole process and business travel to have on sites and you know, then to have online booking tools. And now here we've arrived at the opportunity to have a conversation with uh, the travel booking process. So it's kind of a natural evolution, if you will. Um, you know, it's I don't think it's that surprising that we've arrived there in the sense that now uh, you'll be able to choose your medium, you know, for a conversation. Yes, it can be a chatbot and you can begin by just having a very natural conversation and saying, hey, I need to go to New York next or please look at my schedule and, and start planning my trip for me. OK, and, and all of these things will you know, kind of be kind of natural uh, processes of evolution. And, and I think that you know, like anything that it evolves, um, it, it requires change. It requires the behavioral change of uh, of the user. Um, I, I know at one point, a lot of travelers didn't like to book their own travel. Uh, many of them still have one of their admins book their travel for them. But but it, but essentially, it, it evolves, and and the interface and the and the user experience of it uh, changes. And I think that now that you know the conversation is full on, you know, with uh, in travel and and booking just becomes a natural uh, next step. You know, for how you book travel, and it's gonna it's gonna be in a conversation, and that's how it's gonna happen. Yeah, I, I like that, Matt. I mean, because because I think. The interface aspect, separ separating the interface aspect from the actual the AI side is a really interesting dynamic because the once the AI side, once we're all confident that that AI can 
identify the right trip, understand my needs, put that booking in place. That solves such a such a core piece of the, the booking process. Now I can present that in any number of ways. Where, where today, I mean, you're working largely for self-service, you're working through an online booking tool. Uh, in that online booking tool, you're doing a lot of filtering and a lot of moving things around, slider bars, all that type of stuff. That's honestly kind of a crummy user experience, but, but it's what we've had for our, our lives for self-service for years. Remove that out of the mix, and, and now, all right, I can have the, that AI engine generate it. Well, what, how do I interface with this differently? It could be the chatbot. You could pull this right into a corporate uh, internal Slack or Teams environment where instead of calling out to an agency, going out to a website, they're asking you know, a, a bot within their, their Slack channel, hey, can you book this for me? You know, Take it another step further and, hey, if I can integrate this into my, my Outlook, my collaboration tool set, and I put a business trip on my calendar, why not have that trigger the uh, the actual process for for booking? So if I just put, okay. hey, I want to go to New York to LA on this day, have it kick off the options. I mean, that's the interface stuff that all of a sudden becomes really exciting once that AI element is in, in place. I mean, and, and what I really love about it is that, like I said earlier, uh, travel's an event you know, kind of thing. and, and and events occur all the way up, you know, to the moment where you get the notion that you, know, you want to or need to travel someplace. And that event could be the scheduling of that meeting, like you said, and it feeds off of, you know, something. But it could it could feed off of your schedule. It could feed off of meeting notes. What's the next steps? Next steps. I need to book a trip. Bam. I mean, right now you have systems and services that are transcribing conversations like this and actually, you know, creating an outline of the conversation and what the next steps that were decided. And I, I can just envision the next steps being something that are actionable and get triggered off right away and start. You, you receive an email with availability and a suggested trip and you're off and going. You mm -hmm. don't have to interface and log into anything. It's just naturally happens. I want that tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I dread yes. booking. I dread booking trips. Yep. I hate, I just hate doing that. Yeah, it's it's really fun to think about um, a world in which a, a system that we trust, we have faith in, um, that's reliable, knows me, knows my habits, my my wants, my likes, my, my travel preferences, knows my corporate travel policy, knows my spending limits, et cetera, and is able to sort of anticipate my travel needs based on what's on my calendar. And even if it gets me 80% of the way there, but not necessarily, but gives me options. I think Sam and Matt, to your point, gives present to me options that are relevant to me without having to do the O and D pair and the hunt and pecking. I think that's a really interesting vision for what's possible. Um, so this is new technology. Um, it's, it's still emerging, it's evolving all the time. Um, let's just take a minute um, and talk just a little bit about as people start to think about AI, and Tom, you talked about this at the beginning. What are some of the potential risks? Just um, if you could touch on that briefly as folks think about AI, for example, what are hallucinations? Maybe we've heard that term. Um, what are hallucinations in AI? What are some of the risks that may be associated with AI tools at this stage, knowing that it's brand new technology? Yeah, so it's, um, it's always something that people need to consider and businesses need to consider, right? So how to use it and what data you're putting in and what you're looking at. And I've used it before um, to get references and to use sources. And I mean, when we've used ChatGPT um, and I've been trialing it and testing it and seeing how it works, for example, I'll be like, oh, give me a reference on a certain topic we're doing within cloud or quantum computing or something. And it will reference articles. When I go to click on that article, they don't exist. So it's a very big problem that if I'd have just taken that for granted and started putting it into forward facing documents. And I mean, our stuff gets read by about 7 million people. It would cause all God knows what kind of, or it could cause God knows what kind of problems. So from my angle, which I can relate to, I can't, and Matt and Sam, I'd love to see what you think from the travel industry. Cause I, I wouldn't want to assume or guess, uh, but I can imagine with customer ticketing, it could be quite uh, tricky guessing people's data and accuracies or whatever. Um, but for us, I mean, it's, um, and for just general what people should be aware of it doesn't 
always identify the source of content for us that is massive because we're already aware of how much people are increasingly mistrusting the media mistrusting data mistrusting research and when we have customers paying us to understand a trend or a market or where they should put their money in certain tools and we get that wrong or relying on information we haven't double checked and it always makes me think it means who checks the fact checkers who's the fact checker of the fact checker and i'm always cautious and wary of that even to the big high levels of who facts checks the fda or who facts checks the people that do all those areas the fca the financial conduct authority over here and some people don't like me posing that question but it's the same thing with chat gpt right and with dali or whatever as you were saying kevin whatever large language model you're using or whatever piece of generative ai and to think of that more if you're implementing that into a business case i mean there's been some wide ones like pwc said they're using it bloomberg um i think it's jp morgan said that they're creating it on very minuscule uh, large language models to understand investment decisions and understand what they're going in if you start playing with millions of pounds of money or hundreds of million pounds of money especially with other people's money and you're basing your stats and ideas off a chatbot that you haven't fact checked or gone into or looked at the bias or the original sources or all these different things it, it opens up a can of worms and opens up all sorts of problems um but to make it top level because i'm aware some of the readers might not be going into that um it, it's just you need to check it for inaccuracies you need and chat gpt4 had a big article or i saw a big article that was um it's like an investigative piece about how it's become less accurate and its accuracy levels have dropped massively um i don't know what the situation is at the moment i'm checked for a few weeks but i remember reading that um and again it's the context it, it's really how you say things like johnny bit the dog and the dog bit johnny it's the same words but what it pictures in your mind is completely different and i think it's very important that people look at that they don't just look at the summary and use that as an area to be able to use it as product innovation or product development or what customers think or what um that best what you were saying matt and sam with the best flight route to take and all of those things i'm not saying it can't be powerful i'm, I'm always against putting a negative spin but it's always making sure you're careful and making sure you're checking it and not taking it at face value because to me that's the biggest concern and i mean you've seen the pictures of i've seen a picture of donald trump and barack obama going on a beach holiday i mean they're hilarious but it's uh if you get someone that's out of the out of the context or out of the spin of those people are there um it can, and i saw another one where trump was surrounded by four or five police officers or six police officers whatever it was and I mean, that one is obviously very fake, but all it takes is slight deviations and you're like, huh, is that real? Is that not real? And if you're not fact checking those, um, it's, it's, it, it can lead to all sorts of problems. I mean, especially in the travel and airline and what general travel, whether that's sea, air or bus or road or whatever it might be, um, it, it can, it can be a problem. If you're relying on that, the bigger problem, the bigger compounding problem for people listening is that if you're using that data and you're saying that's correct, that's factual, that's a hundred percent right. And you're feeding it more and more and more and more data that compounds on itself and you can go down some very nasty wins very quickly, or even to take it back to business processes. If you're telling it, yes, this is how to take this image from a customer's query that comes in, file it in this area. You could have a complete misarray of data storage and god knows you could be spending more money on cloud storage than you need to you you could be spending more money on aws credits than you need to um and i'm really cautious i might be going too technical for some people but it, i mean it's in everything from me telling you a a story or writing a story on our publication uh right through to telling someone at the bar this is what happened because chat gpt told me right through to playing with you know a hundred million pound investment and it's like well where have you got the basis from well chat gpt told us or this is what it told us it's um it, it's really important to to look at the, the just fact check it and really look at why how do i know that's right and i think that's what ray dalio always says it's a always fact check what i know and how do i know i'm right um it's such an important thing and it's such an easy thing to do yet people i guess sometimes want the uh the quicker answer or the answer they might be looking for which is can be a problem my view yeah. to, to be care, careful well i think yeah. you know when we when we did our introduction call there's kevin you had said something that really stuck with me it's kind of going back to that five-year-old uh, analogy teaching the five-year-old calculus you know five-year-olds have imaginary friends uh, you got to keep that in mind that that you know those hallucinations the things that that it can make up it's as it's learning it it's got that those tendencies to it 
Yeah, absolutely. And I would say like the positive spin on all of this is I think where chat GB, where chat GBT and generative AI work best are in the hands of people who are already experienced professionals because you have the capacity to kind of verify, right? I think this is why it can be an, a great way to augment your daily work, but it's still, there's no replacement for um, collective human knowledge and experience and wisdom. Um, but if that tool is riding alongside you, uh, you know, you have that knowledge and that inherent experience and and that you can use to trust but verify what you're seeing. Um, great conversation, guys. I want to close. Uh, we'll just do a quick round robin. Um, I want to leave the audience with something actionable because we've talked a lot about um, the concepts and around this emerging trend, which has been fascinating. But I'll ask each of you, just give me one thing. What can travel managers do today, right now, to leverage the power of AI or to learn about it, or simply to get ready for this rapidly emerging trend. And um, Matt, I'll start with you. Yeah, um, I, I think that one of the first things that's super important you know, is to, there's a lot of policy and business rules you know, that are embedded in every travel program. And the opportunity for uh, AI to, uh, to load those into an AI platform uh, and to open that to uh, conversation and the ability to uh, interpret that, you know, I think is super powerful because now you can make your policy much more open and socialize that into the organization. I think that there's technologies out there that can really vector your entire travel policies and processes, and, and you can you know, just open that up to conversation with your uh, employees. Awesome. Tom, one quick thing that uh, travel managers or travel professionals can do today or in this area? I mean, looking at it from a user side, I think it's um, a, it's really great to see how far it's come and chatbots from what the first one in the 1960s or whatever it was, the Eliza chatbot, uh, through to today. And I think uh, for me in the travel industry, and um, what people would look at is um, personalization. That's the biggest thing for me, knowing I've got someone by my side that is knowing my growing agenda and can kind of apprehend where I'm going, predicting where I'm going. And from the inside, I would say that as a user of travel services and business travel, um, that's the number one thing that really helps me and will really give you raving fan customers. Um, so I'd start using it for that kind of area and really implementing it in workflows to, to understand that personalization, which will give you probably better products, better client services, all the things under un, under that roof, uh, at least from my, my view. Great. Thank you. And finally, Sam, let's close with you. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, twofold, I guess, internal and external. Um, and they both have really the same answer. Find the folks that are trying to do things with AI, you know, whether it's in your internal organizations, your IT departments, things like that. It, AI is such an interesting blend of business objectives, uh, what the art of the possible and things like that, along with the technology, mm -hmm. the two can't operate independently. Uh, so those technologists need the business units. Uh, TMCs need the customers to, to engage in that. We, we did a uh, uh, art of the possible workshop about uh, three or four hours long with about 50 folks across Fox having our business units with our technologists the the list of ideas the list of potential things to solve uh, we we started with uh, 150 got it down to 30 real tangible things that we could start solving for that's a the best possible entry point is get in those conversations yeah i should have said that as well so <laughs> that's exactly what i'd recommend as well get into the workshops it amazes me how people um want to know about this stuff and i think if you want to learn about it immerse yourself in it go speak to the people it's very accessible um so i, I second that point so it's a great point yeah really like the idea of bringing the technology teams and the business teams together in one room and really thinking about what are the different areas where this could drive positive change for our customers i think that is a, a great great place to leave it so um, with that, a big thank you to you all, uh, Matt, Sam, and Tom, for your great insights today. This is clearly a topic that will continue to be part of our industry conversation and, and, and the community for a long time to come. And we literally just scratched the surface today. Um, so um, this will be something that we will continue to uh, dive deeper into in uh, forthcoming uh, 
episodes on this topic. So with that, you've been listening to the Business of Travel, the official podcast of the Global Business Travel Association. For more information about GBTA and its work, visit gbta.org and be sure to rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, thank you for listening. Thank you.